You are days away from picking the perfect tomato. And then this happens, the dreaded crack. Well, it turns out that this has nothing to do with bad luck and it has everything to do with plant science. And once you understand why this happens, you can prevent it flawlessly going forward in most circumstances. But before we get into the science of cracking, I've been actually working on my storytelling to make it easier for me to relay information about plant and soil science to you and your garden. I have a formal education in soil and plant science and sometimes the wording for it is just way too difficult. And so actually telling a story properly or well can make or break the channel for the video. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Skillshare. So Soledad O'Brien actually has a course on this and it's called Powerful Storytelling Today, Strategies for Creating Great Content. Soledad is a world-winning journalist, obviously takes very complex stories and turns them into very digestible format. Skillshare is amazing. It's got world-class skill teachers, whether it's gardening education, entrepreneurship, or a hobby such as photography, or knitting and it gives you the opportunity to learn directly from these world-class leaders do assignments in for their courses and truly harness a skill whether it's gardening sewing editing videos telling stories you name it right now the first 500 people to use the link in my description or scan the qr code on the screen will get 30 days free of skillshare so if you want to grow your skills alongside your plants and check it out skillshare thank you so much for sponsoring today's video now let's get back into craft Cracking. Let's crack back into cracking around the world costs gardeners and commercial growers a ton of time and money. It not only makes the fruit look ugly, it actually decreases its preservability and its total market value. But cracking is not random. It's actually a very predictable response in response to temperature, excessive levels of moisture, and how quickly the fruit or the plant itself is growing. Tomatoes ultimately split because the inside is growing way too fast for the outside, and that obviously causes the skin to crack. It's very common in the event that you have a dry spell and then you suddenly add irrigation, or if you have excessive levels of rain, which is actually what's happening here in my case. Essentially the way that plant cells work, regardless if they're in the fruit or if they're in the leaves themselves, so the best way to think of this is actually as a water balloon. So water balloons we know will fill up and actually expand to a point. And plant cells are doing something very similar to that, whether it's the fruits themselves or the leaves. And the cell walls will actually fill up with water. This is called osmotic pressure. This osmotic pressure eventually will build so much in so many cells that the skin will tear. Now there are two types of cracking. There's radial cracking and then there's concentric cracking. Now I actually oddly enough have a tomato that has both because both on the same tomato are definitely possible. So radial cracking is when it goes from the top to the bottom and splits outwards. That's a sign of excessive levels of moisture or a very sudden influx of moisture. The concentric is actually when you have the rings. So you can kind of see a small ring here at the top. We'll think of that, but throughout the entire tomato or or it can just be here at the top. And this is a sign of irregular growth. In this instance, it's not unlikely for you to also see things like blossom and rot. What this means is that my water supply was haphazard and not even. So the plant went through times of osmotic stress where the cells were deflated, inflated, deflated, and back and forth. There was no continual gentle volume of water. And I've spoken about this in several videos this year because hydrology is the name of the game when it comes to Saskatchewan and all the moisture we've had lately. So here are my tactical recommendations to avoid both radial and concentric cracking on your tomatoes. So number one is incredibly obvious and that is keeping the moisture up and also keeping it consistent. We want to water regularly and deeply, usually around two to three three inches in depth is adequate when it comes to one single watering. If you 
went away on vacation or you just simply forgot to actually water the plants for an extended period of time, aka a small sprint of drought, well, you want to rehydrate slowly over the period of two to three days. So rather than one big deep watering, you wanna spread it out evenly across two to three days for a minimal amount of time each round. Now, if you're good at actually predicting the future, you could choose to pick heirloom varieties that are crack resistant. Now, I personally have never had this much moisture in a summer in a very, very long time. So I did not go with crack resistant varieties. So there's a lot of crack in my garden. The cops haven't shown up yet for indecency or for the drugs, so. We're just gonna go with it. Now, the next option, and this is the option if you are in my area and exposed to this really excessive level of rain, is to actually pick them once they begin to blush. So once your tomato begins to blush, it is at its full size. It's not getting any bigger other than potentially to crack. So it's at its full vigor, if you will. Removing it when it starts to blush will allow you to ripen it indoors, and this will reduce or completely negate any sort of cracking that can happen due to excessive levels of moisture. Now this is specifically referencing that radial crack versus the concentric crack. The concentric crack you're not gonna see once the fruits are physically developed. This one I've never really tried before, but it supposedly works, and that is actually pruning in a way that allows the leaves to continually be over top of the tomato. The idea here is that the skin itself is protected and so when things like rain or mechanical manipulation actually hit that skin, it is blocked or buffered in some way, which has actually been shown to reduce things like radial cracking specifically. So it is something that you might want to try out. I personally have not done it, so I can't speak to it. If you're liking these tips so far, science-based tips about gardening, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. I always forget to ask you guys to do so, and it shows based on the fact that 60 some percent of you are not subscribed, which is almost depressing. So Geek Crew, if you have concentric cracking, the ring cracking, this is a sign that during the fruit formation, it hasn't had a continual even source of moisture. It's either had way too much or way too little off and on throughout its entire growing period. If you have radial cracking, that means that your fruit is growing way too fast for the skins to accommodate it. And this means that you need to water less and or pick once things first blush if you can't control mother nature. You have to let me know in the comments down below if you're actually suffering from this this year. I am heavily suffering from the radial cracking like I said, this is one of the wettest summers we've had in probably almost 10 years, I would say. But we're also just coming out of a drought, so Mother Nature is a B-I-T-C-H, and there's nothing we can do about it. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.